Everybody, I want to say hello from Video Land. Sorry I can't be with you live today, but I'm glad to partner with JT and share with you what I've learned about curation over the last number of months. So it's been pretty cool. So let's get out. I, I think I'm headed in the right direction with curation, and perhaps it's something you might want to consider for your business. I can't believe it, but it's actually been two years since I was last here at LA2M talking about a, a new tool that I was really a big fan of at the time, Posterous, and I still use it, and I still have the slide share that's available in the LA2M website right here, what Posterous was like two years ago. I like to create blogs for everything under the sun. It's easy to do that. So I have my main blog for my consulting business, Revlin Consulting, and this is on the poster site. It's not my mothership on WordPress. This is on Posterous. And that's something I talked about a year ago in this program, is um, using Posterous, but also creating a whole bunch of other blogs. I've got 20 now. Back then I had nine. I'm up to 20. <laughs> I use them for everything. I've got private blogs. I've got all kinds of storage in there of things that I do with my consulting group. Um, all sorts of things happening in here. So um, what was that all about? Well, I can tell you that what I was doing was a lot of research. I do have, I still use uh, Revlin Consulting. I have over 100,000 uh, views on that. Um, but I have it integrated into my website, which I'm also going to show you. Well, here is my main website. This is Revlin Consulting. You're actually seeing it from my WordPress administrative page. I have posters em embedded right on the front page. So that mini blog where I can put, in an agile way, any kind of little mini articles or reblogs or riffing on blog posts. Uh, in this case, I'm talking about my program that I'm doing at a conference coming up in Las Vegas. And in a, in a couple months, I'm going to be on a big panel. And I put that on my posters blog. However, what I'm doing is organizing and aggregating I am not curating. So I want to give you a little context and history about what I've learned about curation. I wanted to show you that the idea of curation actually came from Detroit, the future Midwest 2011 conference at Detroit Eastern Market. And there, standing next to D. Davey, there's myself, I encountered Oliver Starr with Pearl Trees and learned all about curation, the first time I'd heard of it. That's where it started for me. I was discovering that my niches were finding me, but I needed to do something with this information overload that I was contributing to. Great quote by Pete Cashmore here. We are overloaded with information. There is great content out there, but what happens if you can't work with it because there's just too much? So I started my usual researching to find out more about curation and I discovered online a great series of photos from the optimalaccesspeople.com and here they are. It's not about filtering. It's not about aggregating. It's about organizing selectively like a good library does, making good choices. One woman is going to New Zealand in about a month. The other woman has lived there for three years and knows the South Island really well and all the good places to go see. They happen to find each other um, at Jazzercise, and I happen to overhear this conversation. This actually happened earlier this week. So guess what? The one is curating good information, good places to see, and good places to go on the internet to find information. The other woman, who I asked about this, uh, said that she was overwhelmed. She could not find... It was just too much information. She couldn't find really what she needed to help her sort out where to go visit in New Zealand and where on the South Island should she go. I just happen to have a son that is in New Zealand right now. And I could tell her a few things he was saying about what was great about New Zealand and also a few things I had researched on my own. Um, having some skills, getting through all that clutter and finding the good stuff, such as the low crime rate and good places to stay, and how to use TripAdvisor. 
that's an example of Curation Live and also an example of what Curation could do for you if you have a particular niche of information. Give us again as an example of you reach out to who is, who is it you're trying to build a relationship and what do they want and then how can you build something, something to meet that need or to serve that need. And one of the things the speaker said is your niche chooses you. Okay, you think you figure out what you're supposed to be doing. A lot of times what you're supposed to be doing comes up and hits you in the face. So what shows up in my inbox a few days after I decide to focus on curation? An invite from Scoop It. Something that I have been invited to when it was in beta and I now I'm using the business version. So this is a Scoop It um, newsletter page where I have listed topics that relate to each other. These two particular topics that came up on my Scoop It feed stream are about IBM and comparing it to what's going on with Apple. And you'll notice if you move on down the page, another article that I've captured, and initially um, the, this was kind of just a happy coincidence, this is about thriving versus uh, wrong turns that some companies have made regarding innovation. And my particular niche is innovation in large institutions. Not any type of in innovation, but the kind that happens in companies because I tend to... So my clients are large organizations. That's the clients I have right now. That's where I send the bills. So here is an example of how I use different steps. Steps one through seven to use a curation tool, in this case Scoop It, to look for good content that relates to each other, makes some type of a systemic whole that's useful to clients, and then I integrate that into all of my social media. particular niche of information that you want and there's a source that you've learned to trust can really help you out a lot. Helps clients know who you are. It helps them learn if they're a good match for you. Do they like you? And last but not least, are you building a trust relationship with your clients? Curation can help you do that. One of the last things I want to share with you is about once you have a particular niche that you want to concentrate on and you just saw what I thought about niches. How do you get really, really good? And so we have Beth's blog, and she has some great suggestions and some tools on one of her blogs about the ideal content curation practice. I'm also sharing Robin Good's clip from his own Scoop It curation stream. Robin Good is also rated highly on a 100 point scale, which many curation streams have is some type of rating system. If clients are coming to you and you're billing, then something must be working. So good luck with curation. I hope it helps your business grow.